Tonight's performance is presented in collaboration with the Italian Institute of Culture. If you like what you hear tonight, merchandise will be sold in the back of the house. And now, please give a warm welcome to Francesco Attesti. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here tonight, and I hope I'm going to bring you in a wonderful journey at, uh, in about 100 years of music. I'm going to start with Franz Schubert with two impromptu. Impromptu is a French word uh, that means improvisation. Actually, uh, this is not a real improvisation as uh, you may think. It's classical music and uh, Schubert wrote uh, uh, very carefully these two wonderful masterpieces. It was only the editor that added his name to the work that are uh, dated uh, 1827, just one year before Schubert's death. I'm going to perform for you Opus 90 number two and Opus 90 number four.
And now going on with uh, another great master from the Romantic time, Frédéric Chopin. Frédéric Chopin uh, um, was a Polish composer that uh, spent most of his life in Paris. He lived there for about 19 years and he also died in Paris. These two works that I'm going to present are quite popular, quite famous. The first one, the first one is a waltz, Opus 69, and a mazurka, Opus 17. Especially the first waltz, there is a, has a little story behind, and it seems like uh, Chopin dedicated his waltz to Maria Wodzinska just before uh, his farewell. And uh, it's a very kind of a melancholic melody. As well as a masterpiece, the Mazurka Opus 17, was dedicated by Chopin to his sister. And especially in this mazurka, in the middle section, uh, you are going to listen to a folk song from Poland. Chopin was always very attached to his home country, and he never uh, forgot uh, the tradition and uh, his songs. Um, in the middle section, in fact, there is a folk song that used to be uh, sang and danced uh, during uh, uh, the summer.
Now something from Italy. Um, Verdi is very well known for being a composer, a very prolific composer with opera, and uh, he composed very few works for other instruments, like for example piano. This waltz for piano was uh, a recent discover, actually was rediscovered by Nino Rota, the famous Italian soundtrack composer, because he used uh, it uh, on the movie The Leopard in 1967, uh, a famous movie with Alain Delon, Claudia Cardenale, and Bart Lancaster. This waltz became so famous that this waltz was uh, soon associated with the name of Nino Rota, but originally it was written by Giuseppe Verdi in his young age. When he was old, uh, uh, Verdi destroyed almost uh, uh, the entire production uh, of his youth. It is because uh, he didn't uh, want to show uh, some little uh, uh, works and uh, not uh, um, good enough uh, in his opinion. This is a little jewel instead that I'm going to present you and I'm sure you are going to recognize the tone. now going to France with Eric Satie, Nocien Premier. Eric Satie was a very prolific composer and he was quite popular in the theater in Paris, but he was also a very eclectic and a peculiar kind of personality. He was interested uh, in um, religion, uh, esotericism, and many other uh, strange things from the past. He created his own religious, but he was not su very successful. He was at the same time uh, uh, the founder, the priest, the treasurer, and the only member of it. <laughs> Despite that, uh, he did really incredible work for piano. There are more than 500 little jewels like this that I'm going to present to you. Uh, Nocienne Premier has a very peculiar uh, name coming from uh, um, a Greek word, gnosis, that means knowledge. And the Gnosis was, uh, in a sort of, by Eric Satie, was transformed in Gnosien, a sort of a 
French word for knowledge. We don't know exactly what uh, he meant, but uh, this is very particular because uh, despite the work is made with only three chords, the composer is able to bring out every sort of expression and I musical ideas.
going on with the music from the 20th century, I'm going to present you two works by Astor Piazzolla, Inverno Portegno and Verano Portegno, winter in Buenos Aires and summer in Buenos Aires. Astor Piazzolla is considered to be the most important tango performer and player and composer. Um, he was uh, a little bit uh, uh, different from the style used by many other composers in Argentina. And uh, some of them, some of his colleagues, uh, didn't accept totally the way that he transformed the tango. But if tango today is very well known all over the world, we need to thank Astor Piazzolla. And I was lucky enough uh, to have one of my teachers that was a dear friend uh, of him, and uh, I was able also to exchange uh, some uh, little words before uh, he, he died in 1992.
I'm going to finish this program with a work by Franz Liszt, Orage, that means storm. Franz Liszt was one of the masters uh, of the romantic time uh, on the piano. Probably he was the biggest uh, pianist of all the time. His concerts were memorable, and um, he literally changed the technique on the piano. And this particular work that was written uh, during his honeymoon in Switzerland shows off really all the possibility and technical difficulties that you can have on the piano. Franz Liszt was uh, very famous to change also the way of uh, playing concert. So it is thanks to him that today we are dressing up like penguins on stage. <laughs> we have to perform by memory and uh, also uh, the concert usually are uh, made with uh, several uh, masterpieces from other composers. Uh, today performers, in fact, are not uh, like uh, in the 19th century that were at the same time performer and composer, but most of the time, I say, uh, if you want to be a performer, you need to uh, study the master of the past. Franz Liszt was really also quite a rock star that uh, really thrilled all the stages uh, all over uh, uh, the world and especially in Europe. So I'm going to say you goodbye and thank you for being here with me tonight. I hope you enjoyed the music with Storm Orage by Franz Liszt.
doing this. Uh, 